People of the internet, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 17 and the Premier League Baseball GM Mode Sim. I am F5 Penguin. You can find me at F5 Penguin all over the interwebs. And in the last episode, things were not so good. We are in dire straits. We are on a slide into home and we are tagged out. We are not looking good. We are 20 and 29. Okay, 20 and 29. We're five games back off the division. We lost uh seven straight we lost 15 out of the last 17 who injuries they are the reason that this is happening so i'm i don't know what to do i made a couple of lineup changes i made some i moved some things around i put wilson in front i went with the gm's recommendation let's see if that pays off we will look at that and then we'll also look at the triple a team today and take a look at what we have for talent to call up, to move up like next season, who we can move out, anything. Anything to catch a break in the action and to try to get ourselves back on track. It is August 19th. We have five messages to look at, and we are 21 and 31. So we won one, lost two. We're still six games back from the top. And look at that. Queens Bees went on a run. They were last in the division. They're now first. They overtook Fargo. We're not even in the conversation for the wild card. We are six and a half games back. So we need to catch up some games here and win for sure. Let's look at uh, the mail here and see what we got going on. So let's see what happens. Raf Kanda or Kanda. Raf Kanda. Six to one win. Let's look at the box score. He uh, only gave up one run. He pitched 7.2 innings. That is is how you get it done. So maybe the decision to actually call up Zamorano and Kondo was both good. Chavez is going to be pissed in the minors, but I do not care. We are trying to get some wins, baby, and that's what we're trying to do. Austin leaves four on base. Hymas leaves five on base. And let's see who produces. So two runs for Smart. Hey, now, two runs for Inselman. Look at that. And Cobra played third base because uh, Phil Pot is out for two days. That And that's fine. That's fine. Cobra... Uh, one hit, two RBIs. Can't really complain there. That's not a strong position, but it definitely is a backup position, and it's working. Uh, as far as Fountain is concerned, two hits for Fountain. I like that. He's going to progress really well. And no strikeouts for Wilson. One hit, one RBI. Left three on base after four at-bats. Not the worst situation to be dealing with. I, I don't think I can complain too much right there. We're just trying to stop the bleeding, okay? We're just trying to stop the bleeding. We lost our second game to Toronto 5-3. to three. Let's take a look at who pitched that one. We gave up three runs in the tenth, so technically, we were uh, it was two to one Toronto, uh, two to two. It was tied two two all the way through the sixth, and then into extra innings. That's gonna happen. I I can't again. I can't get mad at the close ones. I can only get mad at the blowouts and extra innings. What, what can you do there? Zamorano six innings pitched. He pitched a quality start. Bam. Zelaya gets the loss because he couldn't hold the save, or he couldn't uh, at least. Uh, looks like here. So six seven. He came in in the ninth, and it looks like he also came in in the 10th and just couldn't hold it together. That happens. He's a closer. He's made to close out games where we're winning. Didn't happen here. Not the worst situation to deal with. I know we're not going to win every game, but if we can slow down the losing, we will be in a better position, I think. Inselman. One run, two walks. Two walks for Roberts, too, funny enough. Uh, Kober. Wow. 0 for 5. Come on, Cover. <sighs> Come on, Cover. 1 for 4 uh, for Alston. 1 for 4 for Smart. Not bad. Not bad at all. We just need to keep producing runs. That's what's going to come down to is the runs have to be produced to hold this tight. And here comes the emails. Here come the emails. I told you this in the last episode that last season I got one of these every sim once we started to really slide, lost about 12 in a row. Hi, Derek. I've seen bad locker rooms before. We've worked our way through them in the past. This year is different. Nobody's getting along with each other. I'm worried about the problems or about to follow us out on the field for our games. If you care about winning, do something to help us out there. I don't know what to do, though. That's the thing. It's not like I can talk to the team and be like, hey, everything's good. There's no interaction for that. There's no ability for you to actually do that in the game. So if you all know something that can be done, please let me know. But like I click on here, I can see he doesn't handle losing well. Everyone's going to say that at this point. Team chemistry unhappy, performance angry. 
I can't do anything other than have them win more games, but I don't have players to put in position to win those games. So I don't know. If you know what we can do, please please inform me because that would be a good thing. And then, of course, we lost our, our third game against Toronto. one nothing. one nothing. No subs. Martin takes another loss. Freaking Martin. <clears throat> do we bench Martin, too? <laughs> he pitched a complete game, gave up one run. How can you be mad at that, though? One run. I mean, he did his job, right? He did exactly what he was supposed to do. None of these people did what they were supposed to do. That's the problem, right? None of these people did exactly what they were supposed to do, which is score runs because that's their job as hitters. And this is where we sit. Can't really fault Martin for that one. Can't really do it. And we got Wichita coming up. Hopefully, all three of these games will be winners. I know my buddy, buddy Rushpak, who runs that team, won't really like hearing that. But at the end of the day, uh, we should be winning against Wichita. That, that's just the reality of the situation. All right. So going back to rosters and transactions, let's see if anyone is injured. Needs to come off. Miller is out for five days. That'll be subbed. Anything over a week is what I what I put out. So let's see him out. No one else. And Dominguez can go back. Thankfully, we needed that to happen. And I'll make the adjustments during the breaks in between videos to do that. I'll also make the adjustment for pitching. Okay, what are we looking at for injuries real quick? And then we'll look at the AAA once we look at finances. Three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, two weeks, one week. So Duty is on his way back. Uh, he'll be back in AAA in just a little bit. We want to look at info. I'll leave that up there for you for a couple of seconds so you can pause the video and see where we stand and see what adjustments you suggest that we make. Pause for the cost is now complete. Going over to the front office, let's see what we're standing at. 55% increase. Look at this. This is good news. Still almost selling out every single game or near to it, which is good. Average attendance is 27000 So that price increase faux pas I made last season has been corrected, and we should be okay. Looking at the uh, salaries here, or accounting, I'm sorry. We're actually going to be losing a little bit of money. Let's see what happened here. Budget year to date. Um, that was already there. Staff was already there. Why are we on pace to lose now this time? I didn't make an offer to sign anybody with money. I don't know, actually. Maybe we haven't played enough games in August and we had to pay out expenses. I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll be okay, though. We're still going to be positive. As long as that number stays positive for the cash balance, we will be all right and everything will work out. Now, we want to take a look at one other thing before we look at the teams. Zach Stark's next up. Okay, right. That's what we knew. Submarines, my AAA team, 31-25. 31-25 double A, 25 and 31. That's so weird that that's like that. In single A, People are getting developed. The injuries are just really what's plaguing us right now. And without those, we'd be okay. And I know that everyone could say that without injuries, every team would win. But looking at the numbers here, everything's pretty much dead last except solo bases. And def defensive efficiency even has gone down to seven. So you can see that we're just kind of struggling in every position right now. And something has to give. We can't just generate runs strictly from stolen bases and eke out wins we have to actually be consistent and it's not happening that, that that's just simply what's happening it's, it's not so that being said let's go ahead and look at our roster for the dallas submarines let's first take a look at our pitchers as you hear my son screaming in the background amazing <clears throat> we have a relatively short pitching staff we have one one short than the usual in the uh in the pitchers Let's pull up the, I don't know, if you want to see stats, we can do stats, but I think it's more important to look at potential when it comes to these players. So let's look at ratings first. Nothing spectacular across the board current ratings except for Victor Chavez, who just isn't stellar in the major league. We do have Moreno, who's going to be ready to call up in a little bit, and Hernandez, who was my closer in AA, was moved up to AAA as well. So we have him, and he's done fairly well for us. I think he's, he's part of the reason we're doing so well. Yeah, ERA is under one. 25 innings pitched, 23 strikeouts, 16 saves. Yeah, look at that. And 16 saves. Oh, he was in AAA last season. That was uh, Zamorano I called up from AA. My bad. So 
16 saves each season, and we're on track to even get more saves this season. He'll be next to come up probably once I, you know, gut my entire pitching staff on the major league level. We will be moving up some of these players. Looking at the potential, because some of these are younger. I sort by stuff. Eight, seven, six. Six is where I want to live. If I can get five, that's league average, because I'm one to one to eight. So five is an average player, I guess you'd say. And six would be above average. Seven and eight would be elite. Movement, we got Brunk. He's projected to do pretty well, and he's still not uh, seen the peak of his potential. He's still fives and fours. He can go up to sevens and sixes. Future number three starter. Conservative guess. So I'm going to be working him as, as, in much as I can to try to get him up to speed. And uh, he'll be one of my starters that we move forward with. Now, control. Here's your three. Brunk, Hernandez, and Moreno. So those are my guys that are going to be moving up right now. Um, two people that we have in the AAA who are my prospects, top prospects, Nolan and Duran. Uh, those two are projected to be... Not great in potential, but they are some of the top prospects in the league right now, and these potentials could change as well. So Nolan for sure could get a call up. Only real bullpen would be in a mop-up duty. Don't use him in closed games because of his movement being a four. Now, OSA says his movement could be a six, and if that's the case, things could go a lot better. That's why you have a scout, and then you have OSA, and you kind of use that as a metric. If the numbers are way off, it could be anywhere in between. If the numbers are the same, then you know that that's pretty accurate uh, for that player. And right now they're still off, so that's why I'm kind of I bumped him up, and I'm trying to get some games out of him so I can see some some starting time. He only played 11 games last season in the, in the AAA, so I'm hoping if he gets a couple more this season, he'll get a little bit better, and we can kind of get a better idea of what he's going to turn out to be. Everything else, not really anything that's amazing, to be honest with you. We have some stamina troubles with Moreno, but he'll be a closer moving up. Uh, Hernandez can go a little bit more. He'll be a reliever going up. And then, like I said, I'm going to still grow Duran and Nolan down in the AAA for a while until they get a little bit better to come up. Dunsmore is also a good filler spot, but his movement, again, movement has been my issue for pitching. I don't have a lot of guys above a five, as you can clearly see. So... Next season, it looks like it's going to be Hernandez and Moreno moving up, and then we hold on to Brunk, maybe make the call up next season, maybe the ne next season after. Duran Nolan, probably one or two seasons away, just so I can kind of stagger out the, the studs moving in, because I now I have Starks up there, I have Conda, and I have Zamorano. I don't want to bring up everybody at the same time. I need some veterans up there that can produce. If I can hold on to Clark, that would be somebody that I would keep and kind of build around him. Obviously, Martin's not getting it done. Chavez isn't getting it done. So we've got to make some changes for sure. Looking at our other lineup here, and this is our batters for the Triple A. Let's pull up the stats real quick so you can kind of take a glance. We'll pause just a second. And we're back. So I didn't really cut anything. I just kind of took a breath and paused. Whatever. Uh, we want to make a change real quick to the depth chart while I'm here and remember to do so. Dominguez plays third base. All right, so move Garges back down. Dominguez moves up, fills in the role, clear all the lineups, ask manager for all the lineups, boom. Copy depth chart, paste depth chart, makes the change. Clear all lineups, ask manager for all lineups, boom. Got to do that after I make the depth chart change. Anyway, so you looked at the stats. We can kind of see where some of our talent lies. Let's look at our batting ratings currently. We have nobody with power. Again, that's our number one issue in this organization is nobody with power. Nobody to hit the ball into the stands in a home run fashion. Nobody. I got speed, I got contact, and I got gap power. No raw power. Speaking of gap power, McCarty, he's one of my prospects. Pablos, one of my prospects. They're top rated. They should be ready to come up very, very soon. Probably going to move up McCarty if I can move Alston out of the way. Then I'll have Kleinmeier and McCarty up at the major league level. That's a nice little one-two combo with uh, some speed on Kleinmeier and hitting on McCarty. Anyone else is really not that spectacular in current form. 
We do have a, uh, a contact hitter here who's projected to do well. Castillo, he's supposed to be a good player as well. He kind of fell off, lost a, a bunch of his potential. It just didn't grow into what we wanted him to be. Now, let's look at the potential and see what we got. So, power. The best three players I got. Garges, McCarty, Pablos. It's again what I'm telling you. Those are our guys moving up. So, I need to find some prospects that have a little bit better potential. I don't have much in the terms of hitting right now. Gap potential, McCarty, Lyle, Pablos. Zapata, maybe. Contact, fives. I'm not bringing up fours. Anyone with fours is probably going to get cut at the end of the season anyway as we move through and bring up more players. The way I'm doing it, and I think I talked about this in the beginning of the season, is anyone under the age of 20 that has no experience stays in A. 21 moves into double A. 22 to 23 moves into triple A. And then 23 to 24 makes their start in the majors. The only exception would be if someone played a lot of NCAA ball, which we do have that in this uh, in this league. You can see that here with uh, Tamayo. He's 22. It's his first season. So I'm keeping him in A. And if he does really well in A, I might move him past double A and into triple A. But I'm starting everyone in A no matter what. So if you've played a lot before, you're still going to be in, in A unless I need to fill a role in double A and then you move up. And I think I did that with Brady. Nope, I did that with he was in the Canadian Ball League, so he was in the uh, the like the CHL. It's kind of the uh, the high school league for us, and he went right from high school to to major, so he moved up a little bit. But there was somebody I did that with, <clears throat> as you can see here, fifty two NCAA, fifty three A, and now he's filling a role because I needed it for injury. So he he's up. He's twenty two. There's a good example of that, and. I don't think I have anybody else. No, I don't. So that's the only example I have for you right now of that. But that's the idea is to kind of keep players down and move them up and kind of keep enough players in every uh, every league to, to better the team in the long run and kind of bring up prospects as they go and move them through the system the right way. So Millar is going to get cut probably. Anyone with threes, I just need off my team. Like potential three, Castillo, he didn't turn out to be what we wanted. Dominguez, Harrington, like these guys are just, they're not going to cut it. And they're not people I need in my major. So we just need to get rid of them and move them out. Destined to play in the minors. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to get rid of them. Like we can get other people. There's no point in holding on to players in our, in our game, in our sim for longer than we need to, other than to fill a role. Like we can't hire and sign a million minor league guys for no reason. You got to hold on to some people. They could turn into something big. And when they get to the AAA level, if you see that they're obviously not going to progress any further, then you can cut them and fill in the gaps. And that keeps the players rotating fresh through your system. And then hopefully you find that one gem. Every, you know, every position you find a gem, maybe a season or two, and kind of bring up those players as you go. So <clears throat> what do you all think? Let me know. I will bring up the position ratings, uh, or I'm sorry, the fielding ratings. So you can see how they're out how they're out there in the field you can kind of see somebody some people have really great arms sevens and eights that's elite status dominguez elite status so we got some talent we have some talent and i think that in a couple of seasons we'll be good we're just struggling right now in the major level and that's going to be what our problem is i will go back to the lineups for the major league here and you can kind of see their ratings there's their current ratings. You can pause it if you want to. And then you can see their potential, and you can pause that if you want to. Also, you can see all stats in the link in the description to the Premier League Baseball website, which is kind of like MLB.com for this sim. You can see all the stats there as, as you go, and you can kind of see where everyone sits and make any recommendations that you have on how to improve our team. I appreciate the crease police from the recommendation. Clearly, that worked. His suggestion was perfect. I'm looking for more of that. So if you have more information, please tweet me at F5Penguin or leave a comment below and I will read them on air and we will talk about them and, and hopefully make those decisions for you. As my kid is screaming in the background, I'm going to be going in the next video. We will see if we can stop the bleeding. We need to win two out of the next three games and kind of get back on track. If we can do that, we'll be okay. If not, we're going to be hoping for another good draft pick and, uh, we did that in triple in uh, single A ball. We drafted a couple of good players. We have some good prospects down there. In the next video, also, we will look at the double A team, and you can kind of see what our future looks like in a couple of seasons. 
on behalf of myself and all of my organization who cannot hit worth a dime right now, I am F5Penguin. You can find me all over Twitter and social media at F5Penguin. And I will see you all in the next video of Premier League Baseball GM Mode Sim of Out of the Park Baseball 17.